Season 10 is almost here and guilds are about to launch. Alright, so Season 10 is almost upon us. It is literally this Thursday. We're days away from getting Guild, and it feels like it's been a long time coming, and I'm super excited about it. Right, I want to start off this video with a little deviation before we get into Guild, and just saying that I'm back. I've been taking a bit of a break over the past few months, uploading quite a lot less, because obviously a lot less has been going on with the game. But now I have fully returned, you are back to your regularly scheduled Sea of Thieves content. I was actually at EGX on Saturday and I've come back brimming with ideas and super excited for the future of the game after speaking with the developers once again. I'll be talking about all of that in a future video of course. And I have still got some other stuff that I might have teased earlier in the year and a couple other bits and pieces in the works, so don't worry there's still more to come. But we're back and it's guild time as mentioned. The reason why we're talking about guilds today and the reason why this is a ghost flash is because Sea of Thieves have released a guide to guilds video. So we're going to delve straight into it, how guilds work. Being part of a guild is like having your own private trading company, and you'll have to work together with other guild members towards shared rewards and goals, and you do that by partaking in regular Sea of Thieves activities, be that PvP or digging up treasure. This is a really awesome direction that they're taking guilds, like having your own private trading company just seems fantastic. Guilds can have up to 24 members, and each pirate can be a member or an owner of up to 3 guilds. So 3 is the maximum amount of guilds that you can be in or own at any given time. And any pirate can join an existing guild as long as there's space and you're invited. To create a guild, you'll have to be a captain. But when you do, you can give it a unique identity, with its own name, motto and visual branding. You'll then pledge one of your ships to the guild, which means when you set sail, you'll start progressing your guild through the ranks. And you can let other guild members sail your ship when you're not using it. This is a fantastic feature. It lets your ship's milestones be progressed even when you're not online. So that does now mean it'll be easier to obtain a legendary ship. So continuing on, other captains who join an already established guild can also choose to pledge one of their ships to the guild. In order to stay connected to your guild, you can use the Guild Chronicles. This allows you to keep up with what's been happening in your guild since you last played, with the recent activity highlights, which is an absolutely awesome feature, so you know what's been happening, almost an extension of the captain's logbook. Something else they talked about is that you can effectively join memberships when they're online if there's a spot. We can see in this UI here that that is entirely possible, creating an in-game matchmaking system that's not just open crew. Such an amazing system. Let's continue with guild systems though. You can raise your guild emissary flag by the sovereigns. Any treasure you then bring back to them will increase your value in the guild emissary ledger. And depending on your position in the ledger, you can unlock new titles, decorative ornaments, and new magical paintings that are alive with motion. When a guild reaches level 100 in reputation, they'll earn a distinction. The guild plaque found on every guild ship will visually upgrade each time you earn a distinction. And you'll also earn an upgraded flourish on your guild's reputation card. A nice touch. As you earn reputation, you'll unlock many shared rewards, including ships' roll clothing. The ones they named were Navigator, Helmsman, Cook, and Cannoneer, allowing more depth to your play session if you like the role-playing side of Sea of Thieves. Some of the rewards you earn within a guild are only accessible as long as you remain in that guild. However, all ledger rewards and rewards you get for representing guilds of a high distinction, so the ship in a bottle, trinket, and unbroken bond ship set, you keep. They're yours forever, no matter what. That's everything they said. A couple things I picked up on in the video is there is a new reputation menu. It's almost been revamped, 
Obviously, the menu has been getting a little bit cluttered lately just across the board, so maybe that means the entire UI has been revamped. I hope so. You can see here, though, that this is also where you view guilds, so it does make sense because we'd end up with pages and pages of reputation cards. Do I like it? Yeah, I think it's pretty good. There was something quite satisfying, though, about seeing, you know, big banners of, say, Tall Tales, Grand Adventures, and Ancient Legends. You know, the Reaper's Bones, their motto, details, but I'm sure we'll get used to the change. Whenever UI changes happen, we always do. The second thing I noticed is that on Twitter, Sea of Thieves tweeted, when enough guild reputation has been earned, members can choose to sail as guild emissaries and compete in special monthly ledgers to unlock even more unique rewards. To align with the trading companies, the first guild-focused ledger will start on November 1st. So that's when you'll be able to start competing with other guilds to earn those beautiful new rewards, including the animated painting. The first of what I hope is many. This is interesting though, because it means like other trading companies, you have to earn a certain amount of reputation before you can sail as a guild emissary. I do have a couple questions about guild emissaries, such as, is there a multiplier on gold? Or can you sail as a gold holder emissary and a guild emissary? Because if you can only sail as a guild emissary and there's no multipliers on loot, is it really justified? Can you really justify sailing without any bonuses for the rewards? I don't know. We'll see. I'm hoping there are some sort of bonuses or you can sail as a double emissary. But that does just about wrap up everything they said and this video. That's all the information I have today. Let me know what you think of all this down in the comments below. Are you excited for guilds and what rewards do you want to see come with them? Personally, I cannot wait for guilds. If it was the only thing in Season 10, it might be a little bit more concerning, but we've obviously got the brand new Skull of Siren Song Voyage and Safer Seas, so it's set to be a really cool, awesome season. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy them, please do consider leaving a like. It really helps out the channel an absolute ton. And subscribe to stay up to date with all the way to see of the news as and when it comes out. And while you're at it, why not hit the bell as well so you never miss a single upload. But anyways, apart from all that, thanks for watching and I'll see you later.